Welcome to another Mr. James Accounting Tutorial. Today we will be looking at Unit 1 of 2014, Paper 2, Module 2. Let's get right into it. The West Coast Eatery is a fast food restaurant that is operated as a partnership of three individuals. The three partners share profits equally. The following selected account balances are for 2012 before any closing entries are made. And we are given the capital of the three partners, Calvin, Sylvia, Leroy, uh, and then we are also given their drawing and an income summary profit or loss. Okay, and they share profits equally. We are told so that the profit sharing ratio for this income summary is another name for the profit and loss account. So the profit of the partnership would be 90,000. How we know it's a profit and not a loss? Uh, it's a credit balance here, right? A, prepare a statement of partner's equity for the current year ended 30th September. Assume that no partner has made any additional investment during the year. Okay, so what they want is a statement of partner's equity. When I say equity, what you are looking at is the capital and all of the reserves. Okay, you know, in a partnership, the reserves would be the current account. Okay, uh, the current account is usually made up of uh, the, how the share of the profits and the drawings, the share of the profits take the form of salary and interest on capital. In this case, we are not given any interest on capital or any salary, so it's just a matter of sharing the profits for the loss. I have prepared the statement of equity already, and uh, we'll just go through it. We have three columns, one for Calvin, one for Sylvia, and one for Leroy. The capital at the start, in first of first of October was fifty five, sixty thousand and five thousand. We add the share of the profit, which is equally so the ninety thousand would be shared thirty thousand, thirty thousand, thirty thousand. And we add that together and we will get the capital before of drawing and we minus the drawing fifteen fifteen thousand and we come down to their capital okay so the final capital would be calvin 70 sylvia 75 and leroy 5000 part b assuming that calvin and sylvia spend the same amount of time in the business why might leroy be given the same portion of profits as the other two partners now we have to think about this very carefully before you answer because uh, we have two partners spending the same amount of time in the business as another partner and he is receiving the same amount of profit as they are although he is only providing about one tenth of the amount of capital that they are providing okay after thinking about it, you could come up with something like this. He has special expertise and or uh, spends more time in the business than both of them. Okay, the special expertise especially. He can provide a little capital and uh, because it is needed by the business, he gets a bigger portion, a bigger portion of the profit that the other two partners. Part C state three factors that the partners should consider when deciding how to distribute the profits of the partnership. This one can be interest on capital and you will consider that because the capital differences between the partners. One partner may provide more than the others. In this case, the interest on capital, he will get a larger interest on capital, and that sort of evens it out. 
and we have contributions to work. The amount of time they spend working in the business, they should be paid for it. Uh, salary, and the salary should be about the amount of time they spend within the business. So those who spend more time will receive more salary. The areas of expertise. Some partners have expertise in a particular area uh, that is needed by the business to serve their clients. These partners need to be paid for that and it must be come out of it, coming out of the profits. Party distinguish between corporations and partnerships in terms of the following characteristics. One, owner's liability for debts of the business. Two, transferability of ownership interests. And three, continuity of existence. We begin first with owner's liability for debts of business. Partnership, corporation. In a partnership, partnerships are li partners are liable for debts up to their private possession. There may be limited partners who are responsible for debts only up to their capital invested. However, each partner must have at least one unlimited partner. But in general, the partners are liable for debts up to their private possession. Okay? The corporation. Shareholders are liable for debts only up to their investment or shareholding in the corporation. So they cannot lose their private possessions over the debts of the company. Transferability of owners' interests, partnership, corporation. In the partnership, you have admission of new partners, changes of partners' interests, and retirement of partners allowed. At each time one of these things take place, what happens is you have a new partnership being formed and uh, the old one ceases to be. In corporations, however, shares can, are easily transferable by sale on the stock exchange. Okay, so anyone can sell their shares by simply going to the stock exchange and getting a broker to share, sell it there for them. Continuity of existence in a partnership and in a corporation. The partnership is not continuous. The agreement continues until a partner retires, admission of a new partner or a partner dies. Okay, as soon as any of these things take place, the partnership ceases to exist and either a new one starts or it comes to an end altogether. Corporation is continuous. Changes in ownership does not affect the firm since it is a separate legal entity from the owners. So uh, the shares can change hands a million times. The new owners does not affect the corporation. The corporation still continues to exist and will exist continuously until it is winded up. We are given some data here and as usual the first thing we should do is read what is required of us. Prepare a multi-step income statement in accordance with IES 1, Section 6 at IFRS for SMEs. All right, next, we start looking at the top. The new accounting clerk employed at Chin's Abadashi, located at 27 Barnett Street, has made several errors in the preparation of the first set of financial statements. Below is the income statement she prepared for the year and entity of September 2013. All right, so we have here a statement of in 
comprehensive income and we are told that it is incorrect it contains several errors so our approach to it should be to go through and see what the errors are first and then we will know what, how to correct it the owner is convinced that he should not have made a loss and is worried that if he reports the loss to the Indian Revenue Department he will be assessed and the tax rate of 25% applied. He has asked you to review the income statement presented and make the necessary corrections applying the stated tax rate. Our stated tax rate here is 25%. Okay, so how we will approach this is we will go through the income statement and we will note what the errors are and then we will present the corrected income statement okay so we start at the top and you have to have the name of the business at the top here okay don't forget that chin zabadashri statement of comprehensive income as that and you give the date it always follows the pattern who, what, when. Whenever you are doing a IFRS for SMEs or IES one income statement, you should have your dates like that. Sales two thirty, and uh, this is our first error here. Add sales returns and allowance should be less sales returns and allowances okay and uh, the it should not just be sales return but and allowances uh, when we were doing csec exams we used to have only sales returns up here and uh, the allowances used to come down under here the allowances is usually sales discount and um, but that's increases in allowance about that as well uh, cost of goods sold, merchandise inventory on the 1st October, okay, that look okay. Purchases, that's look okay. Purchases, returns, allowances, you have to minus it. So look at these two figures. Yes, they have minus it. And uh, then we have, we get the cost of goods available for sale, 166.994. So that we will less again we have add where we should be minus in the closing stock okay of 54,800 uh, we got a cost of goods sold right so we will think that this figure is grossly overstated and uh, when we take the sales and we minus the cost of goods sold we will get our gross profit of gross income and then we have the operating expenses now according to the IFRS only the operating expenses should be here the wages is okay interest expense should not be there that is not an operating expense supplies is okay freighting should not be there freighting is a part of the purchases and should be added on there that is what you used to call courage in what's in uh, csec sales discounts again we said that part of the allowances up here and should be up there the office equipment of course that goes to your balance sheet furniture and fittings of course that goes to your balance sheet as well the depreciation of office equipment that can remain interest income is not a uh, part of the operating either you can take this and add it on to the gross income here or you can add it on at the bottom here to the net operating income as other income depreciation for the 10 15 that could remain under operating expenses and then you have the total you add them all together you get your income from operations and net income when you 
minus the total from this here. And it should not work out to be a loss according to the owner. Okay? So let's take a look at the corrected comprehensive income statement. Your corrected income statement. Since I'm going to show you statement of comprehensive income for the year and the 30th of September 2015, you need three columns. It's a multi-step. And what I've done is um, I have put in the, the errors in a separate line or space, didn't add them on, so you can see where the correction is. Okay, but this should be added to this figure and, and one figure shown on the here, right? Okay. So sales discounts added on to the sales returns and allowances and you got it eighteen one thousand eight hundred and twenty. So your net sales is two twenty one eighty. From that we're gonna take the cost of goods sold, the merchandise inventory, purchases, less the purchases, returns and allowance, and the freight in comes in here. Okay, the carriage in one. The cost of goods available for sale is the sum of these three here. Sometimes students forget about this one up here. They just add these two. So you be on your guard about that. And we would let merchandise inventory of 54 eight or minus it the cost of goods so on the one ninety four. This minus this gives us 112.96. That is our gross income from operation or operating income. We look at the profit and loss section next. Income from operations. I have it here, but you should remember that it's one statement. You shouldn't have this figure twice. I just restated it because I could not get all to fit on the same screen. Here we have operating expenses, the wages, the supplies. Remember, it's only the operating expenses that will come under this heading, right? And uh, depreciation and so on, you might be wondering about those. Those are operating expenses and normal business expenses, right? 2,500 and uh, 4,000, we add them together and we get our total operating expenses, which we take from the gross income and uh, we get net operating income. The interest income, and we can take the interest expense out of it. So we get 740 and we can add these two together and get net income before taxation. Then our taxation, would be 25% of this, which is 12,064. We get that income after tax of 36,192. So, okay, now remember when you are doing this, this line does not show in your statement of comprehensive income. I have added there for convenience so that we don't have to return to the other part of the screen. Okay? Share. Like. Comment. 